Okay, looks like we're streaming on Facebook. Hello, my friends. This is Lavina Archers. Welcome to um, this Monday morning where it's a wonderful third line day. Not only is it a third line day, it is, let's see if this is working. Yes, live. Am I live? Oh, my desktop screaming, screening share is paused. There we go. So you should be able to see my screen now. Can you see uh, the just now chart that's in right in front of me? Just go ahead and type into the chat. Yes, if you can see it. And uh, that way I can know that you're here, that you're looking at this screen uh, so that I can make sure that this is all working because you never know on a third line day. Third line days are great for trial and error, for figuring out what doesn't work, particularly on the material plane for bonds made and broken. You see it? Okay, thanks, Tara. So um, it is the first business day of daylight savings time and uh, some people are a couple people are here in the group with me but most of you got the email as far as our projector success secrets that that class is going to be in an hour so i'm just going to do a brief transit report for those people who showed up and uh yeah let's take a look and see what we have in store for us today so transits if you don't know what transit the word transit means it's basically the actual position of the planetary life aspects that influence us because of the neutrino streams neutrino being very small particles um, that carry mass they move through the, the breath of stars they move through each of these planetary activations and where that location of that planet is creates the imprint that now comes into our body and we reflect or amplify or filter Ra would say we would filter the consciousness stream so we're going to talk about the consciousness stream today is that sound interesting to you then you're in the right place so today we're looking at at a third line day like I was mentioning just a moment ago third line so there's where the line is and I'm being very basic because this is going into the human design system Facebook group as a live stream so welcome to those of you who are there hi happy third line day did you make a mistake today did you spill your coffee all over the desk did you bump into things did you make a, um, a oops <laughs> so the third line what's the most important thing to remember when there's third line activations is it is a day for experience the actual experience or experimentation on the physical material plane can lead to a lot of learning and discovery, potentially growth. So what you want to do, if you have strong three activations in your design, you can learn what doesn't work on the material plane. Now, if you don't, on third line days, you get to experience what us threes do all the time, and that is what doesn't work on the material plane. I was just talking about this with a group of um, Ray Baby Seers that finished up today when we are talking about line um, aspects, the lines of the Ravi Ching. And the most important thing to remember for threes is to learn what doesn't work and to actually exalt that. And we don't do that in our society, do you? We, us, in the general homogenized population, it's, oh no, we don't want to make mistakes. Let's cover that up. Let's not do that. Let's not talk about what we're pessimistic about or what didn't work. We only want to exalt what does work. Show me the millionaire. Show me the person who's really succeeded. Show me that. Don't show me the downtrodden and the people who are still in the trenches trying to duke it out, trying to figure out what works on the material plane. We exalt. We want to see the success stories, don't we? So on third line days, just recognize, and for any of you who are raising third line children, please remember to ask them, what did you learn? The most important thing to remember is what did you learn? And it's interesting um, that I'm speaking to you right now here on today's 22. So there's the sun in gate 22. And we also have Neptune. <laughs> In gate 22 so Neptune is what's hidden from us it's our illusion art spirituality the Sun is the core essence so what we're experiencing is this possible expression of awareness okay so this if you have a defined solar plexus here's the emotional intelligence function right here if you have it defined and that 22 comes in now there's an influence on you to hear really be open to gate of openness gate of grace be open to hearing what people want you might be socially open today now maybe in your design you've got a 12 on the other side whatever planetary aspect that happens to be is going to color how you experience this voice of caution in your life so this is the voice that says i know i can i can try I'm in the mood to try. I'm in the mood to converse. This is the only social channel, and it is the 
creative channel, the creative channel of all of individual circuitry. Individual circuitry being more about the individual and not necessarily about getting that message out into the world. But if you've ever listened to Ra Uruhu, who had the 12, you can hear that lyrical quality in the voice. You can hear that powerful mutation. The rest of his design was very mutative and individual as well. But to be able to actually change the perspective of how the collective experiences and knows about itself in the world, that's this channel, this channel that is um, that to be able to be social or not. Channel of openness, a design of social or antisocial being. So if you've got the 12 and now here comes the transit, perhaps you experience this, I'm in the mood to try. I'm in the mood to be social. I'm in the mood to talk. I'm in the mood to romance because this is the expression of romance. I might be moody. I might be melancholic. I might be sad. I might be going inward. I might be feeling something that I want to express outward into the world. So how is this transit landing with you? It's up to you to be able to observe it with awareness. So that's one of the reasons why I do transit reports, real brief ones right before classes. Just say, take a look. What is going on today? What is the thematic of the day? So the thematic of the day you're going to find either here in mybodygraph.com, you go to the My Body Graphs portion at this moment. We're revamping it, so we're going to make it a little bit different. But you go there, you click on New just now, and you're going to find just now, and it, it updates automatically. So when I click on it, it opens up the little informational window panel here on the right-hand side. But when I close that part, here's the transit tool, and you can see what, how, look at that moon, how quickly it moves through the gate activations. But you can see also what else is going on and when it's going to shift. Okay, so I just talked real briefly about one aspect. This is the gate that gives us a fear of silence. Is anybody going to pay attention to me? Does anybody want to listen to what I have to say? Or maybe um, a deep, deep sadness about not being able to express what we have held deeply in the you know, our heart of hearts, you could say, in the, in the deep, passionate romance, melancholy, the splendor of melancholy that lives within us. <laughs> and it's funny that I'm making the splendor of melancholy, putting those two words together, that's kind of the lyrical, poetical quality of this energy because it's deeply, deeply personal. And it's this movement of energy that wants to express because this is an expression trait up here, says the 12, the voice that says, I know, I can try, I'm in the mood, let me romance you, I'm in the mood to converse with you. And here comes the 22 that says, I'm open, I'm open to hearing what you really want over time in that pulse of existence. So that's 22. Now, I went here, 60, so why don't we go there next? The gate 60 is in Saturn right now. So Saturn is our correct discipline or limitation. If we're not obeying our own law, Saturn is where we get kicked in the butt. So right now, Saturn is exalted. You can see that little arrow pointing up means it's exalted. Let's see why that is. Let's click on that little button here. Okay, because Saturn is what exalts it. Do you see that? Do you see how there's a little Saturn right there and the exaltation? So this is the energy to maintain identity and security despite limitations. Gate 60 is the gate of limitations. So it's the pressure to find order in life. It's the pressure or the drive to mutate because this is part of the channel of mutation. So Saturn is bringing some, some discipline, some correct limitations, some conservatism, third line, into our ability to maintain our identity and our security, despite the limitations, gate of limitation in the root center, giving us drive to evolve. Now, where are we going to go next? Ah, I want to go up to 61. And why I'm going up to 61 is because of, and let me just erase this, get clean again. 61 is also part of individuality. And you can see that Pluto is up there, okay? Pluto, our truth transformation and psychology. And then also Jupiter. Jupiter is in the line of occult knowledge right now, where this is the gate of mystery. And 61 says, occult knowledge. Have you noticed? Do you want to go and study things? Yeah, there's a pressure to go inward and discover the truth of it all. Why am I here? What's going on? Here in occult knowledge, Jupiter is teaching us, Jupiter, personal law and protection, this expansive benefic, 
beneficial kind of energy. It says the pressure to know the mysteries through esoterics, occult knowledge, first line. Then on the detriment side, where the pressure to know the mysteries can be so strong that one can be eventually incapable of handling exoteric realities. Have you ever had that experience where you're going inward, 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 and it's all about the inner knowing to what, the point where you can't even handle being part of the day-to-day -day mundane existence? That's a possibility here with the 61. So that's what the cult knowledge in first line is. Now let's look at Pluto, truth, transformation, and psychology. It moves very, very, very slowly. So we've been feeling this one for a while. Here in the fourth line of research, you see how there's a little Jupiter sign right next to it? So let's roll down here. See how it says Jupiter? And because Jupiter is sitting right there in that same gate, it's influencing Pluto to express in the detriment. So the illusion that collaboration will enhance inspiration. That's what Pluto is bringing to the table. So now when we talk about these big thematics, it's like, oh, what does that really mean for me? In order to experience this energy with awareness, you need to know a little bit about your design. So as an example, if you've got a 24, you see the 24 on the other side of that strength or channel right there, the 61 pressurizing the 24 so that it can find or realize, come to um, rationalizations of inner truth, okay? Rationalizations of inner truth is what the 24 is looking for. So that planetary activation on the other side of the channel is creating a temporary definition if you've got a 24. So you're going to experience this differently depending on what planetary activation you have on the other side of the channel and how this is resonating or pinging with the rest of your design. If your 24 is in a first line, there's more of a strength in the energy. There's more of an introspection because the line thematics are going to be the same. The one and the one are resonant to each other. So when the frequencies come together, there's going to be more of a solidity and maybe an insecurity that leads you to introspection, that leads you to study and investigate. And now you come to uh, rationalizations to understand awareness and find inner truth. So this is an inspirational field, gate of mystery, that we're all being bombarded with right now. So it's the pressure to want to understand how does human design work? When we have a strong 61 coming in, I recognize, I see all these people coming in. Oh, I want to understand that too. There's a lot of people in design that have 61. Is, do you have 61? Hi, oh, I've got 61. 61 in line three in my moon, my conscious driving force. So I've actually got Pluto and Jupiter hanging out up there on top of my conscious moon. So there's been a lot of transformation in my life. How about you? What is this like for you? This is where I get really curious and interested in other people. Because I'm a projector and because I like studying the system, I like to hear your feedback. So if there's anything you'd like to ask, say, or share, please feel free in the comments below where you find this video. Now, uh, we still have time, and I'm curious to see what the rest of the transit uh, holds and as it unfolds. I'd love for you to t take this journey with me. So let's continue. After individuality, because of the frequency, we did all the individual aspects. Let's take a look at where this energy, the gate of grace, perfected openness, social grace, or not, <laughs> is grounded in. So core essence, the sun, grounded and balanced in the 47. So the sun, an innate openness, Perfected, possibility of perfected openness through the alignment of emotional energy and awareness. Ah, spirit expressed, hey, 50, 55, possible awareness, uh, potential awareness of spirit moving through the emotional system to the possible expression of passion and spirit, okay, emotional energy and awareness. That's being grounded, exactly opposition. So every time you see sun and earth, and the nodes, they're always going to be exactly opposite, like in that wheel you see be behind me, opposition, okay? So that's where human design is very unique, in that we use the earth as a planetary position. So let's take a look at this. Oppression, the gate of realization, life feeling oppressive and futile. Mm -hmm. In the third line, we have Jupiter exalted, the eventual realization. One is really okay. <laughs> I like that one. Or on the flip side, if you've got Mars in here or Mars on the other side of the channel from this, so maybe your 64 is in Mars, extreme difficulty in realizing one's self-worth. So this is where an 
an investigation and not interrogation, but an investigation into your own design helps you see where other thematics may be coming from. When you start to study design, you learn about the basic giant fundamental not self tendencies where like as an example of why this is coming up for me, self worth, extreme difficulty in realizing one's self worth. Now, where self-worth is a keynote is in the undefined heart center right here. Do I think I have something to prove? I'm feeling unworthy and undervalued. What is my worth? What is worth about? What is valuable? How do I prove my worth and my value? So these are big life questions of the mind as it moves through life with an undefined or open willpower function. The heart center or the ego. This is where we we meet the material world because this is where the channel of money is and the expression of tribal <laughs> fundamentalism and materialism all happens to express out into the world of form, the 45. Okay, so this is the hub at the center of the ego circuitry, the ego itself is at the hub at the center of what it is to be human and part of tribal groups. Okay, so I went into that <laughs> so that we can see now, hey, wait, look, extreme difficulty in realizing one's self-worth. As a keynote, that is the third line in the detriment, third line detriment. If you're um, experiencing life and not recognizing that your mistakes are precious and valuable. Oh my God, if I could go back to my childhood self and tell her, hey, you know what? You're really okay. <laughs> the eventual realization, hey, I'm really okay. Whereas when you are a child, if you're a third line like me and you were raised not to exult in the problems or the challenges that you face, the difficulties that arise and the, the issues that come up as a third line and the mistakes that are made, if you're not trained to go, what did I learn? If your parents didn't go, what did you learn? If your parents went, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you making so many mistakes? Or maybe it wasn't your parents. Maybe they didn't use the swear word. Apologies. It happens sometimes. Um, the experience that most third line children have is ah, there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough, especially with that undefined heart center. I'm not good enough. Why does everybody else get it right? And I'm the only one that gets it wrong. Poor me. Why me? Why now? On third line days, that's if you're not a three and you don't have a lot of three activations, this is the closest you can get to experiencing what this is like for another. Unless you're a projector and you really deeply amplify and absorb the other person, then you can kind of experience what that's like um, through the other. But one of the things I want to um, get you to be aware of, and this is just transit, my life experience and the transit talking through me. Hey, when we're talking about the past experiences, the confusion of the experiences that you've gone through, coming to realizations that one really is okay is such a wonderful gift and a blessing. When you can love yourself completely, totally, utterly, no matter what the heck kind of experience you've had in life, no matter what problems you've faced, no matter what things that you think, you think, you think are your fault and that you're to blame for, don't worry about trying to be perfect, about trying to have everything right. Yeah, the, the symptom, we'll go here <laughs> in a little bit, a symptom of insatiably trying to perfect and correct, you know, having Im immense, too much for a lot of us, self-criticism and yeah, a lot of potential doubt in that logical process that leads us to discovery and the experimentation and the identification of enthusiastic, skillful ah, life on the experimental plane. We see that there is this juxtaposition of a dynamic where my, our minds always want to go into the future. They always want security. And the experience of going into the past is part of what we help utilize to develop that future security. So what happened in the past, the past experience, this is part of where that gate of openness is being grounded in the earth, the opposition. So when you see oppositions in a wheel, those hexagrams across the way, they're exactly opposite of each other. Have you noticed? Let's look at the ray of mandala real briefly. And if we take a look, ooh, and the, the moon is there too. It's a lot of that grounding energy, the manifestation of spirit on the material plane, hey, is about the realization 
recognition, what makes life meaningful, not just oppressive and futile. Yeah, so we have some really powerful activations, the 22 on one side, where we see the sun and Neptune. And then on the other side, that 47, that earth, where we're grounding the realizations of the life's experience and the feelings, the felt sense, not just what happened, but what it left us with as a feeling, the potential awareness of the meaning of these experiences. And there's that moon that's also influencing us. So I brought you here to take a look. Anytime you're looking at the Rave Mandala, which is a beautiful meditation, check out how on one side, there's a beautiful and exact opposition of the hexagram line values on the other side of the body graph that is there at the beautiful center. So you can see how there's this beautiful symmetry as it moves around the wheel to help us understand the life aspects. Hexagrams are a, a, an ability for you to get an archetypal theme of all of the different movements of what is possible for us as human beings, the, the life lessons and the life learnings. So it's a, a wonderful exploration. Now let's go back to the standard body graph before I lose my train of thought. You know, I... I have a very open ashna. I'm emotional. I'm up here as far as open up here. So sometimes I get a little bit off track and tangent. If you have any questions, feel free to post, but I'll continue a little bit on this journey and just look at the nodal environment. So the interesting thing about nodes, okay, Rahu and Ketu, as far as the nodal environment, this is how everybody, when it comes to the transit report, Everybody is being conditioned to see in this way. So these two are very powerful down in the root center about our drive and stamina, our focus. And interestingly, today in the Projector Success Secrets that's going to be coming up in about a half an hour or so, we're going to be talking about the root center. But what we're looking at here as far as the conditioning factors, everybody is being conditioned to see future, face forward, face future. Why? Because both of these are in circuitry that is collective logic and logic being about the future, pattern recognition, okay? So I'm not gonna go into the line value here, but it's just this natural expression of, you know, here, let's have some stillness. We're moving towards stillness and let's have some pressure or some drive to correct and perfect. That's why I mentioned earlier, don't worry so much about being perfect. Yeah, not, it's, uh, there's this commonality, and I don't like to go into memes, but this one I like a bit, progress, not perfection. Not all of us are, are designed to make progress quickly or consistency, in fact, in consistently. In fact, a bunch of us are inconsistent or you know, sporadic in the progress that we make because there are only so many of us that have energy directly connected up to the throat, Communication, action, metamorphosis, yeah, manifestation, mutation might happen sporadically for us. So to just be patient, just to observe, just to witness, kind of detach from being so invested in trying to make some particular pattern or experience happen or experiment happen and just go along with the flow. Watch for your personal decision-making strategy as you move along this path and this journey of the human design, that beautiful human design experiment that you're all a part of if you're watching this and you're really dedicated to yourself and your life experience of what is my inner truth. You're watching yourself unfold. You're recognizing yourself as you enliven and lighten up. You're witnessing these patterns. You're recognizing the differences between all of us. Instead of homogenizing everybody, of, well, of course, everybody thinks this way and everybody knows that. Instead, going into what's unique about me, generator? What's unique about me? Who am I for myself? If you're a projector, what is unique about you? That person that's right in front of me in this moment, in this time frame, in this space reality where we get to come together and have this communion and this dedication to the unity of consciousness, this merging of existence. It's so beautiful to be a projector. I love it. Now, the other thing, there's those manifestors who have an ability to maybe mutate 
in correct timing through informing, to inform in order to impact through the experience, to be able, I don't want to say dominate, though it can happen, but to be able to be in charge of their tribe and to inform of what we have to do for all of us to be safer, secure, healthier as a tribe, as a group. Those are just the direct manifestation channels. There's others, but if you're a manifester, then there may need to be some time to process what is to come to clarity of what is true for you. Or you may, may need to go into, you know, what is in it for me, me who is the ruler of my tribe, my experience of being the dictator, my mind. So this is interesting. Um, one of the things that's been happening in my experiment, I'll have a few more minutes to talk here, um, is that the voice inside of the head has gotten stronger and I know not to believe that voice inside of my head about myself. But when I'm languaging nowadays, it's really interesting how there's this really strong sound and the sound comes out and I have no idea <laughs> what is going to come out of my mouth. And I'm listening just as much as you are. Here's this unconscious channel. So that's the one consistency that I have in my design. I cannot help <laughs> what comes out of my mouth sometimes. And I don't know why I say what I do, but I watch as it lands. And um, I can hear the, the more lyrical kind of poetical quality that's coming through me right now. I know that we're all experiments in consciousness in that these filtering of the, the data stream that's going on all around us, we have no choice but to filter it. And we filter it differently, independently you know, depending on what's going on in the transit and what's going on in us. So just going back to, um, I was explaining the process, my own personal process of my journey. Um, I'm reflective right now. It's, it seems like I'm really going into, okay, this past experience. As I mentioned, our recognition of what you know, is healthy and safe that moves forward into the future, that comes up after the experience. We've had experience and now we maybe imagine or reimagine, we think about what could happen into the future, but there are the possibilities or potentials that are there. So that's also part of the transit. It's just you know, moving us forward, what's possible, second line. Yeah, naturally um, looking to the future. Now let's continue in looking at the aspect. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Same line, 47.3 in, in the earth right now and in the moon. This Mercury, we're still in Mercury retrograde. And right now it's going through gate 30, which is the gate of feelings. So our communication and thinking is conditioned by Mercury. And Mercury, Mercury in the gate of fire, the gate of feelings gate of desire, burning, yearning, clinging fire. Um, now, right now for Mercury is in retrograde in the fourth line of burnout. So you might find that there's highly energized feelings that may lead you to emotional collapse, particularly if you're um, being strongly conditioned by this because you've got a conditioning receptor on the other side of the channel. So conditioning receptor in your own body graph, if we take a look at just some thematics of what I'm talking about here. Here's a conditioning receptor or a dormant potential in an undefined function. This center happens to have no conditioning receptors. This center happens to have a conditioning receptor. So for what I was mentioning is for someone who has a 41 and not the other side of the channel, like me, I have a whole channel here. So I have my own emotional experience that's consistent, highly defined, fixed, narrowly defined, highly specialized. There we go. But for you, if you have an undefined root center and maybe even an undefined emotional system, this Mercury going through the emotional system might have been wrecking havoc with you. Have you had a burnout experience lately? Are you feeling, you know, that gate of feeling, that gate of desire, that gate of fate? Have you been feeling like, you know, unrealistic pace maybe right now? Let me get that line value again uncontrollable feelings and accompanying un or emotional outbursts if you have a Jupiter on the other side. I'm hopeful that you guys see what I mean. It's kind of hard to advise you know, in general rather than specifically, but if someone were coming into my practice and they're all burnt out and they're all emotional and I see that they're not defined in the emotional system, they got a 41, they got it in Jupiter, are they experiencing uncontrollable feelings and accompanying uh, emotional outbursts 
that's part of what they're here to learn about. It's part of their learning and true wisdom potential. So when I say true wisdom potential, if you have a totally open center, yeah, anything that's totally open in your design, that means that there's no biological genetic component that is indicating that you're here to specifically learn about something um, from that planetary activation that always conditions you to experience this energy, communication and action, metamorphosis, yeah, <laughs> in a specific way. Because here, I'll go into my example as a body graph. Here, true wisdom. No specific hook into particular concepts or ideas, not needing to be rigid or fixed about the opinions or the answers or the rationalizations or the realizations or the insights, being able to be open and flexible. That's true wisdom. Now, specific wisdom that is coming from a specific activation in your body graph is a place where you're always learning about, in this line context, Venus, um, powerlessness or a lack of control. On the other side, being in control in right timing through recognition invitation as a projector with emotional clarity, being in control. But because there's a planetary activation, it's the planet that's saying, hi, this is my values and relating. I need to be in control. Are you okay with me being in control, says the planet, when it's in relational context to that other one? Hi, there's my husband. So I'm learning true wisdom about people who are 45s, but I'm learning specific wisdom about people who are my interactions with people who are wanting control or not, or de me demonstrating how to be in control. And here, what is it control about? Implementation of material resources on the physical plane. This is the channel of money. This is the strength of management. These are people who can do the dirty work. The 21 is biting through. It's biting through negative and persistent interference in order to take control. But as a projector, can't, can't take control. No, in the beginning of my human design experiment, before even human design, I was completely powerless. I was very deeply in my Saturn punishment and limitation, abdicating at any chance I got and disassociating any chance I got in order to release power, be feel powerless to people who had more power over me. So anyway, example, I, I digress. Let's go back to our... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I still have time. Back to our planetary activations for the moment. And we talked about Mercury in retrograde, where it's about feelings. Now let's talk a little bit about Venus. And actually, Venus and Uranus are dancing together in the same gate. The, 30, the three right there for Uranus and the four right there for Venus. So Venus is our values and relating, as I mentioned a moment ago. And Uranus is something unusual. So there's chaos, innovation, experimentation with Uranus. And what we can see here is there's a money line there. And all third lines are material way lines or money lines, as you can see. The material way, so on the material way, the trial and error, the bonds made and broken, the actual experimentation and the hitting of the material plane happens where the third line is. So we have three and four dancing together in the gate of caring. Now this gate is a tribal protection gate. It is the defense circuit, part of the defense circuit. So it is about caring for others or not, others that are part of your tribe. So when we have an undefined sacral center and we have 27s there, you're learning specifically about how to care for, support, and nourish others or not. The most important thing you need to remember is if you are in, to be able to take care of others, you have to take care of yourself first. That's the first line thing. That the fundamental law is put your mask on. Yeah, when you're on an airplane, put your mask on first before you put your mask on of your child because it's less likely that that three-year-old child is going to be able to reach up, grab that mask, and put it on you if suddenly, you know, you lose oxygen in the cabin. You've got to take care of yourself first before you take care of others. Okay, so let's look at the relationship line values here. When it, let me start with the Uranus since it's a lower uh, trigram, third line. 
And then we're going to go up to the fourth line in the Venus values relating. So this is one of those interesting places in the body graph. When I talk about three and being a, the material way, the third line is what is materially successful. Now, is that correct for you or not? Always use, utilize your decision-making strategy, your strategy and your authority to recognize whether this is correct for you or not, instead of making you know, spontaneous decisions uh, from the transits or anything that you're amplifying in the world around you. So there's the third line of greed. The power in derived in having more than one needs, whether that's sexually, mentally, materially. Greed. There's where greed comes from. Third line. Okay. That's Pluto in detriment, interestingly. So if we had Pluto there, that is, uh, not detriment, exaltation. If we have Pluto there, it would be exalted, the exalted, the power derived in having more than one needs, whether sexually, mentally, or materially. Is this part of your design? If this is part of your design and you don't love it, then you don't love yourself. Isn't that interesting? We have a totally um, amoral system in human design. Everybody, there's a place for everybody and everybody in their place. So on the flip side, if it were Mars that we had this in your design, the lust for power to get more than one needs. So right now, everybody is experiencing this energy. Now, whether you're going to do something with it or not is completely up to how you filter this, this uh, transit. How is it pinging your design? How is it resonating or not? Is it creating channels? Is it in a an aspect that's getting lit up in an already defined sacral center and you're already a third line. So now you're just like more focused on lust for power to get more than one needs, more than one needs. That's the material way, isn't it? Isn't that what is material? We see that's materially successful. We see somebody greedy and oh my God, there they go with all more than they have more than they need. Who are they to be? No, no judgments anyway. <laughs> so we're looking at greed in the third line. Okay, chaos innovation, um, what's unusual is in the transits right now. Looking at, we're learning about, if you don't have this as an activation in your design, I have a 27 in a line two, not a three. But if you don't have this completely at all, you might a witness maybe learning about the obsession of having more than you need. Be aware of that. If that's not in, in your genetic nature, you're not a third line, that's a, a learning and a wisdom potential, not to make a decision because of it, but to witness what happens to you when you're bombarded by or programmed by these transits. Okay, so now let's take a look at Venus values and relating. Here we have the 27 in line four. So different. If you read the Ray V. Ching and you go through one and two and three and four and five and six, you see how different they are. Here's a beautiful example um, between the binary couplets. So the lower binary, one and two, very different. The middle binary, the mutative area of the, of the hexagram, three and four, very different. And then the five and six, very different from each other. Here's the difference between three and four. The difference in three is greed. And the difference in four is generosity. Isn't that interesting? So this person learning, or we're all learning, programmed by Venus, to learn about generosity, the natural sharing of attained abundance. Jupiter exalted, the power and strength to share generously. Or if you've got it in Mars, it's detriment, the potential loss of power and strength through indiscriminate sharing. Now, if you're new to transit reports and you're looking at this going, Exalted, detriment, what the heck does that mean? Just real briefly, when you see exaltation, so there's a little triangle right there. See how it's only one side is showing up? Exaltation, as far as the collective reality is concerned, these two extreme ends of the same coin, one side, the world at large says, hey, that's great. That's the ease. That's exalted or evolved or enlightened or whatever the case may be. It's one side of the spectrum. And then way swinging over to the other side of the spectrum, Ra wrote the rave I Ching for the extreme ends of the spectrum. On the other side is the that detriment. Now there's somebody out there in the human design world, and I have no idea who they are, but I keep hearing it from other people where they're going, oh, the detriment, that's bad, that's wrong. Please don't look at it that way. The detriment might be considered by the collective world at large to be a challenge. Yeah. And some of them really don't sound that pretty. Yeah. They sound really terrible. 
but the detriments are absolutely necessary if you have it in your own design, the challenge that is there. And it's harder to love yourself in those areas of challenge because usually, especially if you're a three like me and you come to human design, you're like, <gasps> negative, pessimistic. Oh, there it is. That's what's wrong with me. Oh, I have no choice. Oh, what a world, you know, that kind of thing. So please don't look at the detriment and think, oh my God, I wish I didn't have that. Life would be so much easier if I didn't have that. No, you actually really need the detriment. It's part of your genetic makeup, whether it's in definition, which is consistent about you and what you're here to make decisions from, whether it's in an undefined function where you're here to learn about that, how that shows up in the world. And that's the puzzle piece that you give to others. So anywhere you see in your design where there is a definition or an openness and there is a detriment, bless that. I want, I want to say God bless that, but bless that. I know, I know Rob wouldn't approve. Plus that detriment. He actually thought that the detriments found the detriments way more honest, way, way more real. And so love your detriments. There's the message. Okay, love your detriments. Why love your detriments? Because they're part of you. We cannot cut off aspects of who we are. Yes, we can evolve. And yes, those extreme ends of the spectrum of this and that, Ross said it was the one mistake he made in describing the human design system. Instead of calling it exalted and detriment, he wanted to call it this and that, but it's, it is what it is. And there you have it. In my languaging, I like to call it ease or challenge personally, because those exaltations are usually more easeful. They're more easy. People go, oh, yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's publicly acceptable. Good boy, good girl. You're, you're on the right track. But then the detriments, people are like, really? <laughs> that's uncomfortable. Why are you doing that? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, there's all this judgment. So just watch for that. Ease and challenge. This and that. Not wrong, not good, not bad. Just is what it is. Accept them, okay? So let's continue. Let's look at what's going on with Mars. Mars is in the gate of ambition. And here is a first line. First line that says influence. So the marrying made in the gate of drive is the pressure to rise up either in your own material circumstances, your own um, relationship with others. Yeah, the public maybe your corporate circumstances, rise up the corporate ladder to achieve more on the material plane. It's, it's the beginning of the stream of capitalism. So here with the first line, ambition energized through secret relationships which fuel influence. Have you seen? Have you noticed? Secret relationships. Okay, first line, energized here in fueling secret relationships which will fuel influence. That's part of the design. And then on the flip side, we have, that was Pluto exalted. Here we have um, Venus in detriment, ambition, which demands formal recognition. And that can limit, it, limit influence. So just of this and of that. But this is the pressure again to rise up, to transform one's physical, material circumstances. And this is not selfish or self-centered. This is not individual. This is for the tribe. So it's like, my ambition, I'm not a 54, but I'm speaking as a 54 now. My ambition is so that I can bring up my tribe with me, whoever my tribe happens to be, whether it be your family that you identify with, whether it be your business family that you identify with, whether it be your high human design family that you identify with. This is what we're driven up to, to transform, to rise up. I find so many people, this is another place in human design, might be a lot of my design because I have a 32 and a 42, but I find so many people who either have the 54 or the 53 or the whole channel in human design because it's powerfully transformative, powerfully transformative. So we talked about everything else here. We're done with looking at the transit report. Just want to say that it's been a pleasure hanging out with you. And I'll go take a break before we do our uh, class. Oh, my goodness. There's a whole bunch of people in here. So hi to Melanie and Nina and Stacy and Tara and Anid and J. Marta. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to let you guys go for a brief break. When we return, we will continue our journey with looking at projector success secrets. So that was just a little um, transit report at the beginning of our human experiential way, because I'm part of that, uh, so that I wouldn't um, miss 
anybody coming in an hour early. So to say hi to you and I will see you in just a few. So I'm going to stop the recording, stop the live stream. And for those of you, uh, you who are joining us for Projector Success Secrets, I'll see you at the top of the hour. If I can find the end button. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes.